Hey everyone, this is Nad at Haiku. Today we're going to take a look at adding interactivity to your Haiku projects. We'll start with a sample project and we'll make parts of it seamlessly loop, which is useful for things like loading screens, and we'll make elements interactive so you can click on them. We'll also create a loading bar, which as a designer you have full visual control over, but it's also super simple for a developer to embed into an app or web app. Let's begin by forking my project. Forking is a common practice in open source development and we recently added it to Haiku. I'll post the link to this page in the video description. A fork is basically a copy of a project, so just hit fork, and then you can add the project to your account. This project was just created using animation techniques that we covered in our previous video, which I'll also add a link to below. I'm just going to go ahead and change the units here from frames to seconds, because that's what we're going to use today. And then I'm just going to expand the timeline so that we can see more of it. So you can see here that from zero to zero and a half seconds, we have a fade to clear. And then from there to six and a half seconds, we have our animation that we're going to want to loop seamlessly. Then there's a few seconds gap. And on the other side of that, we have another part of the timeline that we're effectively going to use as a different state. So what we want is our haiku to play this part once, which it will do naturally. But once it gets to six and a half seconds, we want it to just keep on looping between there and half a second in. So to do that, we just go to six and a half seconds and hover above the playhead and then add a frame action. We don't need that. And we have these little helpers here that essentially write little snippets of code for you. We want to use go to and play. And this is in milliseconds, so we enter 500 for half a second in. To test this, let's use preview mode. So it faded to clear nicely, and then when it reaches six and a half seconds, it'll just loop back seamlessly. Awesome. Now it'll keep doing that until we tell it to do something else, so let's make this next button at the bottom interactive. So to do that, let's just click it and add an element action. And say when it's clicked, we can use go to and play again to jump to 9 seconds or 9,000 milliseconds. And then the other thing we want to do is just guarantee that the timeline stays here when it's finished this animation. So we can enter another frame action here and instead tell it to pause. And once you're paused, let's also add a way for you to get out of this state. So using the restart button, let's add an element action and say on click, let's go to and play from right at the start of our timeline. Okay, so let's test all this together. We have our initial fade to clear, our seamlessly looping animation. We can click to progress and then click to restart and we can do it all over again. So with this simple technique, you can use different parts of a single timeline to express different states, effectively creating what's known as a finite state machine. The next thing I want to show you is how easy it is to bind application logic and data to your designs. We're going to take this bar at the top and expose it in a way that allows it to be easily hooked up as a progress bar in an application. To show you how I've got this set up, I'm going to make this bigger. And using the command key, I'm just going to drag out a custom origin, which are a new feature in Haiku. They allow you to set a point from where position, rotation, and scale are set from. I'll just undo that. This is set up at 0, 0, which is the top left corner. And for this project, that means that when we change scale x, it'll grow or shrink from the left-hand side. So if I enter 0 0.5, then the size will be half, having grown from the left. I'll just undo that to set it back to 1, and let's instead drive that value using a state. So I'm going to define a state here, calling it progress bar, with a value of 1. Now, instead of defining the value here, I can instead use an expression to reference this state value instead. So I want to make this change throughout the whole timeline, so let's move the playhead to 0, and enter an expression using an equal sign, and then write the name of the state. Now we can modify the state value and it will drive the scale of the progress bar at any time. And then the very last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to convert this to use percentages instead. So I'll just divide the state value by 100 and then we can input numbers up to 100 up here. 
So now let's publish to view this online. So on my share page, I can see instructions for installing, but let's just view this on CodePen for now. I'm going to paste in a simple JavaScript function that'll emulate a progress value for the progress bar. This could just as easily be your application logic driving this. And there you have it. The progress bar is filling up and we can get a feel for how it all works together. So that's it for today. Grab Haiku from our website, check out our developer documentation, all the links are in the description. If you have any questions, let us know. See you next time.